Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm mighty happy to review Professor Michio Kaku's most celebrated book, The Card Equation, The Quest for a Theory of Everything. Theoretical physicist Professor Michio Kaku in his book, The Card Equation, embarks on a quest for a theory of everything. His thoughts on the subject are organized into seven chapters, starting with the unification and ending with finding the meaning in the universe. The entire book revolves around one of history's greatest geniuses, Albert Einstein's long-standing dream of the unification of the four fundamental forces, namely gravity, electromagnetic, and strong and weak nuclear forces. The first few chapters of the book trace the evolution of quantum physics from the belief of an atom being an indivisible particle to the generation of a plethora of subatomic particles within the Large Hadron Collider. The quest did not end with the discovery of the God particle the Higgs boson in 2012, named after the Indian physicist Satyendranath Bose. A new theory emerged known as the standard model to describe a plethora of subatomic particles. However, a major loophole of the standard model was that it made no mention of the most important force controlling the universe, namely the gravitational force. So the theory of everything should not only explain the subatomic particles of the standard model, but also the bizarre phenomenon in the universe like the black holes, wormholes, dark matter, dark energy, time travel, and creation itself. Faraday invented the concept of field, which consists of lines of force spread throughout the space. Maxwell showed that moving magnetic field created an electric field. Maxwell also made a remarkable claim that light is an electromagnetic wave. Faraday and Maxwell unified magnetism and electricity. Einstein unified space and time, matter and energy in his famously simple and astoundingly symmetrical equation E is equal to mc square. Amidst Einstein's theory of gravity and the quantum theory emerged another theory which seemed to be the missing piece in the grand jigsaw puzzle known as the string theory which claimed that the subatomic particles electrons, quarks, Yangnil particles, bosons, and gravitons are nothing but vibrating strings. Unlike the quantum theory which excluded gravity, string theory made it obligatory. In string theory, the dimensionality of space is fixed at 10 dimensions. String theory is a union of two profound theories in physics, Einstein's theory of relativity and the quantum theory. In string theory, when two strings collide, they give rise to two sets of subatomic particles, the fermions of which matter is made of and the bosons of which forces are made of, and which consists of photons, gravitons and the angle. In string theory, fermions and bosons cancel out each other to create a finite theory of quantum gravity. All the forces of nature are mediated by bosons and all the atoms of matter are a collection of fermions. The central feature of the string theory is the grand unification of all the particles in the universe. In string theory, each particle has a superpartner called this particle or superparticle. The symmetry between fermions and bosons is called the supersymmetry, which allows to eliminate many infinities. String theory is the only theory so far that can unify gravity with quantum theory. Superstring theory in essence is the theory that can unify all known particles in the universe. 
Just when you thought you found the key to unification, physicist Edward Witten found a hidden 11-dimensional theory called the M-theory, which is based on membranes rather than strings. A string theory is the reduction of the 11-dimensional membrane theory to 10 dimensions. A string is actually a membrane in disguise. Yet another concept of a holographic universe emerged, which described our 3D world as perhaps a shadow of the real 10 or 11 dimensional world. The biggest criticism of string theory is that it is unstable because the energy possessed by the gravitons is quadrillion times greater than the energy possessed by the Large Hadron Collider and would require a particle accelerator the size of a galaxy for a direct test of the theory. However, it could be tested indirectly like most phenomenon by examining the echoes from the sun, Big Bang, etc. And one possible signal from hyperspace is the existence of dark matter, which comprises of 26.8% of the total universe and 68.3% of the universe is made up of dark energy. At present, the one leading candidate for dark matter is the WIMPs the weakly interacting massive particles among which one likely possibility is the photino the supersymmetric partner of photon physicists believe that the earth moves in an invisible wind of dark matter which is probably passing through our bodies right now if a protino collides into a proton, it may cause the proton to shatter into a shower of subatomic particles, which could then be detected to test the predictions of the string theory. The book answers one of the most intriguing questions of how could something come from nothing. In quantum physics, there is no such thing as absolute nothing. Absolute blackness does not exist. There is no absolute zero because the atoms even in their lowest quantum energy state are still vibrating. Even pure vacuum is frothing with matter and antimatter which Hawking called space-time foam. This is how something came from nothing. The book ends with Professor Michio Kaku quoting Stephen Hawking. If we do discover a complete theory, it should in time be understandable in broad principle by everyone, not just a few scientists. Then we shall all philosophers, scientists and just ordinary people be able to take part in the discussion of the question of why it is that we and the universe exist. If we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason. For then, we would know the mind of God. The God Equation by Professor Michio Kaku is a brilliant book and I highly recommend it to anyone interested in quantum physics.